Hi everyone! Today we're going to do something pretty different and something that Rob and I have been wanting to do for a really long time. We're going to go on a hike and then we're going to cook on a portable outdoor kitchen. It's our first time and of course we want to bring you along. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Today we're going to spend the whole day outdoors in the woods. I didn't actually always think of nature the way I do these days, but about five, six years ago, I realized how much solace and calm I find in the forest or by the sea. And since moving to the city, Rob and I haven't spent as much time in nature as we used to, and we miss it. So uh, we always wanted to try outdoor cooking. So to spark some more motivation to get out on some hikes, we bought a camping stove and this is our first outdoor cooking adventure. Before we headed out though, we did some research and checked out some online checklists to make sure we knew what we were doing and didn't forget anything. And then we started prepping and packing and we realized that it's good to pre-prepare some stuff. So we decided to make some crepes batter and we used buckwheat flour, some milled flaxseed and salt that we mixed with water and then sweetened with a little bit of maple syrup. And then we just packed this up in a water bottle just to take along with us so that we could cook something simple but we're also going to make a risotto and for that we just packed dry ingredients. I realize it's kind of ambitious to do two things on your first trip but we love cooking as you know so we thought we'd just go for it. You realize how many things you need to cook successfully when you pack things up like this. And these little containers really came in handy. We packed some maple syrup in them as well as cooking oil and some salt and cinnamon so that we could prep both the risotto and some apples for our crepes. We also packed up some dried mushrooms that we're going to use for the risotto. And dried mushrooms are a great thing to bring because they weigh almost nothing. And then we measured out everything else we needed so we didn't have to carry too much weight. I can definitely recommend bento boxes for packing for your hikes if you want to cook outdoors. They always have really great dividers and little compartments so it's easy to keep things separate. And they're also made to take on the go so um, you're not going to spill anything or have rice all over your bag. <laughs> The last food item we packed were some apples that we're going to fry up for the crepes. And then you mustn't forget something to light your stove with, which I was really worried that I would. So here are my matches and now we're ready to go. But before we head out, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and tell you a little bit more about them. Squarespace is an all-in-one website builder with lots of great tools to make it easy to build a beautiful and well-functioning site without any previous knowledge about coding or website building. Personally, I've used Squarespace to create my online food photography portfolio and I really like that it is so easy and intuitive to use. There are plenty of themes, font combinations and color combos on Squarespace to get you started. And there are themes for many different purposes. So it's great for everyone from business owners and e-commerce all the way to creatives and bloggers. So if you're thinking about creating a website for any purpose, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com forward slash good eatings for 10% off your first website or domain. And now let's return to our little adventure. As we didn't have lots of time to prepare for our first trip, we decided to go somewhere that we've been before. So we headed to our car and started our little adventure. We found some horses the first thing we did as we got here. What a nice surprise. 
guys and um, yeah we actually chose this place because we've been here several times before my sister actually used to work here with horses and um, she used to do tours around the area so we've been here several times with her but we've never actually been walking here on our own so we're gonna follow a trail we chose a trail that's about four kilometers or four and a half kilometers which isn't that far but we thought it's a good start for this cooking adventure and uh, yeah it's the first time we're walking with this much um, packing do you say packing well luggage <laughs> I don't think you say luggage either but this much weight in our backpack so it'll be interesting to see how we go um, but yeah we're excited so let's just head out into the woods and find our spot to cook it's actually a really nice spot here by a little man-made lake where we thought we'd cook and I wanted to say that, that this is a nature reserve and at least here in Sweden you're only allowed to cook in designated areas in nature reserves. So if this is something you're looking to do that could be good to keep in mind to always look up where in the... Um, well where in nature you're actually allowed to cook where you are because uh, obviously there's a risk when you have fires. So yes we're gonna head there so let's go! spot where we thought we could set up our kitchen and cook for the first time and uh, I love this spot because it's got a little bit of water and it's quite secluded and actually there's like no one here today usually we've been here on like weekends and it's just been full of people everywhere and this spot where you can sit has always been busy now someone's actually coming with their dog so um, it's gonna be misleading because we've seen no one so far so I wanted to tell you a little bit about the kitchen that we got and we did a little bit of research online to see what's like best in test and it always showed this uh, Swedish made Trangia kitchen. I don't know how to say that in English but in Swedish it's Trangia and um, we got the one that's good for cooking for like three to four people so that we can have friends with us uh, out here if we want to um, but there are smaller ones as well and uh, yeah it's the first time we're gonna set it up we tried it a little bit at home but what's nice about it is that it has two little pots a frying pan that's meant to be non-stick sorry i've just got some hair in my mouth <laughs> and then ours also has a little coffee or tea kettle uh, for water and uh, yeah we're gonna put it to the test we're gonna start by making a risotto with mushrooms we brought some dried mushrooms because that's really good and light uh, to take out with you and we have a couple of fresh mushrooms as well some shallots and some garlic and we're gonna chop it out here how nice is that so uh, but first yeah first we need to set up the kitchen and see if we can connect this um, gas 
container. Uh, you can have these kitchens either with alcohol or with gas. And um, alcohol is more envi environmentally friendly, obviously. And um, it uh, can you can use it when it's really cold out, whereas gas you can't. But today it's like seven degrees, and um, gas is more user friendly. It's easier to control the flame, and uh, we're used to cooking with gas, so we thought this could be a good start. And then when we are better at this, we can maybe try the alcohol uh, burner. But uh, yeah, we need to hook this up and see if we can get some water to boil for the dried mushroom. So let's do that first. Turns out it's pretty easy to get a camping stove going, which we were very happy about. And it only took a few minutes to bring water to boil. And this is one of the perks of using the gas burner. That's what a lot of the recommendations said, and uh, we can ensure that that was true. And it turns out that making mushroom risotto is a really great dish to be making outdoors where you have few resources because you get lots of flavor when you use dried mushrooms like this if you cook the risotto with this soaking water. And uh, it's also such a nice dish to eat outside because mushrooms grow in the woods. And it would be even nicer to do this in autumn when you can pick the mushrooms and then cook with them. We can't wait to do that. And as you can see, we decided to chop everything outdoors. We thought it would be cozy, although it was a little cold on the hands. But you could, of course, do this at home. I mean, chop everything at home and then pack it in containers and bring it so that it's just ready to pop into the cooker and you don't have to spend time chopping. But it is a nice social thing to do. The little containers we used for the oil and the spices were really handy. So if you have something like that on hand, that will really be great for packing to bring on an outdoor cooking adventure because it takes such a small amount of space. But I would say that even a small bottle of oil would maybe be better because then you can seal it a bit more securely. If you've never used dried mushrooms before, here you can see that they've softened up and they've grown a little bit in the soaking water. And it's good to leave them for maybe 15 minutes before you add them to the pot and cook them with the other ingredients. There were two things that really helped give our outdoor risotto lots of flavor and that was cooking it in the mushroom water as I said and the other thing was using a stock cube. I think this is a genius thing to bring on an outdoor cooking session. I must say this is going surprisingly well. It looks more or less like a risotto you make at home. Um, and. Um, it was very easy to put the kitchen together, to get the gas hooked up, to get the flame going. It, it, I honestly thought we'd have more issues or an issue. We haven't really had any problems. And uh, this is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I would love this, but um, I really, really do. And uh, I think, uh, well, I can, I'm just thinking of all the other things I want to try out here. And we also saw they have a fire pit here. So maybe in the future we must brave a, uh, an open fire cooking session. But um, yeah, this is coming along nicely. And what was nice about this gas burner is that you can actually adjust the flame. So you can have it on a low heat or a high heat, uh, which is really convenient. And that's what I read as well, that it's much more manageable with a gas, um, gas burner, that you can actually um, yeah, adjust the heat and cook more or less like you do at home. 
Um, but uh, with the pleasure of being outdoors in the fresh air and you can hear the birds once in a while, although it's not summer, so there are not that many birds out here. Um, and it's a little bit cold, but you know, we're starting in February, so that by spring and summer, we'll be pros at cooking outdoors and we can just enjoy the summer season. But yeah, I think this is uh, not gonna take that much longer and then we'll show you the finished risotto. <laughs> We managed to make some tea on our little cooker as well, which is really nice because we're getting very cold. But our first cooking experience, our first dish ever made outdoors was really good. Uh, I give us uh, 8 out of 10, I think, for that one. And uh, yeah, it was surprisingly easy, everything, the whole process. And my sister actually came to join us as well. So we got to share it with her and um, little Sersha was very uh, unimpressed by all the sitting still. But uh, she's learning. <laughs> slowly but surely and now we're going to go level two we're going to level up and see if we can actually manage to make some crepes on this um, non-stick frying pan that comes with this cooking set so we've prepped that at home as you saw and i've just now cut up some apples so i'm going to make like some fried cinnamon apples and uh, see if I can manage to make some vegan crepes on my outdoor cooker. Let's see how it goes. I'm not too sure about this, but I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm hoping it will all turn out good. So let's do it. Well, it turns out it's not super easy to make buckwheat crepes, vegan buckwheat crepes on an outdoor cooker, or at least I'm not that good at it. But we started making tiny little ones instead, and then it went much easier. So in the end, we had a yummy dessert with some buckwheat crepes and those lovely cinnamon apples. We also brought a little bit of muesli that we had lying around at home, and we drizzled it with some extra maple syrup, and even Sir Shah like the pancakes so i think all in all the pancakes were a success even though it was a little bit tricky to make them in the regular size that they're meant to be not so easy to cut with the spoon <laughs> Thank you. 
when we had finished our pancakes, we were thoroughly cold all the way through into our bones. So we just packed up quickly and then we headed back towards the car. And I will say that it was really nice that my sister joined us. It uh, is a really nice and social thing to do to cook outdoors. Of course, it's a nice and social thing to cook indoors, but it is something special about uh, meeting outside and uh, cooking with a little camping stove. I can definitely recommend it. We had a lovely time. As we approached the car park, my sister reminded us that there's this floating walkway up in the trees that you can check out. And of course, we wanted to show it to you. I always feel very grateful for experiences like this and that someone's thought to put something like this in, even though I was a little scared as it was quite sway up there. <laughs> We made it back to the car after our uh, pancake debacle and uh, walking with my sister and little Sersha. And yeah, as you saw, the pancakes were like, okay, I wouldn't recommend doing this pancake batter on this type of um, cooker because it's a little bit harder to do the heat and the pan's a little different. So we managed to make some little mini pancakes, which to be honest, is perfectly fine with me. Uh, but we had some disasters before that. So making big ones just didn't work. But the apples were perfect in this kind of cooker. They cooked so fast and they were really yummy. So I think um, apple desserts are definitely a thumbs up for outdoor cooking. All in all, I think this was a really fun adventure, experiment, uh, first time doing something new. And I look forward to many more cooking adventures in nature. Uh, hopefully it gets warmer pretty soon so we don't have to feel so cold as we're doing it but I hope you enjoyed seeing our first excursion with our outdoor cooker and if you liked the video let us know in the comments if you want to see more of this type of cooking outdoors videos uh, we'd be very happy to make more and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching I look forward to seeing you in the next video until then take care bye